All right, uh, welcome everyone to the final lesson of the seven week challenge algorithms week. Uh, first off, can people confirm in the Zoom chat they can that they can hear me? Okay, um, that's good. Now, uh, first order of business is to make sure that you guys have your checking code set up. So just give me a quick second and I will share my screen. And um, <clears throat> so um, I can't, okay. So this will be up for like the first few minutes. So this is your checking code. Actually, you know, I'll just switch to the window. Um, um, can you put that in the chat? Yeah, I'll do that right now. Um, chat. Why can't I see the chat? Um, one sec, let me stop sharing and then I'll... Uh, oh, okay, nice. Okay, um, let me just share just that window. Um, all right, so I'll give you guys uh, about two minutes to get that in. Please do this as you're coming into the Zoom meeting uh, because otherwise we won't be able to uh, mark that you are present. So we'll get started at 5.35 with that, um, with the actual lesson content. All right, uh, let's check the live chat right now, actually. Um, live chat, and I can't view it for some reason. Okay, right here. Um, okay, uh, can anyone type in the chat if they are not, uh, if they have not checked in? Remember, you need to check in to let us know that you're here. Uh, so please do that right now. Um, check yourselves in and then we should be good. And just so you know that all this content is being recorded. So, uh, yeah, don't say anything inappropriate. Um, <clears throat> okay. So it's five thirty-five. Uh, if you have not checked in, please use the code that is on the screen uh, or that's in the chat now. Um, make sure that you get that uh, done and uh, we'll go ahead and get right, uh, get started right away with our um, <clears throat> content. So now let me go back to sharing my full screen. All right. Um, whoops, nope, 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 nope. Okay. Um, <laughs> Just close that. Uh, all right. So this is the introduction to graph theory. So the first lesson was talking about how you could um, get into the basics of competitive programming and uh, algorithmic design, seeing how you could um, implement your ideas into uh, efficient algorithms. Then lessons, the uh, se second and third lesson, technically, if you want to call it 2A, 2B, whatever, uh, the next two sessions talked about how um, dynamic programming can be used to speed things up in, um, <clears throat> in uh, designing algorithms. And now we will go to modeling our, um, we'll go to modeling our, um, a situation with graphs. So, when you guys think of graphs, 
you typically think of either, or if you haven't done uh, programming much, you think of uh, bar graphs, line graphs. Uh, yeah, I was in right now, but I'm not specifically talking about it it just yet, but I'll do so just in case so I don't forget. Um, so typically you guys would think of line graphs, bar graphs, and so on and so forth. But there's, oh, I just pressed stop sharing. Oh, let's try again. Okay, so you guys would think of those types of graphs, but graphs in competitive programming are connecting um, different uh, objects with certain edges or certain, uh, sh with certain sh and they appear in certain shapes that we'll discover. And so I'm speaking in more of a general uh, term right now. So people who have, have some experience might be wondering why I'm talking about it like this. It's because I wanna go through the formal definitions of each of the um, terms first, and then we'll go to manipulating those things with uh, traversing through these graphs. So, <clears throat> Graphs can be used to uh, represent their houses that are connected by roads or people on Facebook connected by friendships or a grid of adjacently connected squares. So uh, let's go through some of the terms to uh, get started with graphs. So the first term is a node. And so um, if we have some visualization with a drawing over here, so let's draw. So let's say uh, you have a bunch of houses. You have house one, you have house two, you have house three, and so on and so forth. These houses are nodes. So a house is a node. Uh, I probably won't be writing all of them uh, like that because it will probably be taking a lot of time, but uh, yeah. Okay, so those are nodes. And so, uh, we can't work with just nodes alone or vertices alone. Vertices are, t you could say nodes or vertices or houses, but we're gonna use the house uh, analogy here. You can't just work with nodes alone because then you're just working with a bunch of points. You need to connect those points in some way in order to join them. So an, an edge is what connects the nodes in the graph. So if we were to connect this house to this house and this house to this house, and let's just draw a couple more houses or a couple more nodes, um, all these edges here, these things are called edges. And we'll worry about the direction of them in a moment. So they could be sidewalks, they could be roads, they could be flight paths if you're kind of crazy. Yeah, spider web. That's a really good way to think about it. So um, yeah, that's the edge. And then our next, um, <clears throat> our next category or next definition we're going to go through is a weight. So a weight is something that's associated with each edge and so it could represent the distance, the amount of uh, effort approach, uh, effort taken to cross that path or something, or um, the amount of fuel that you use, any sort of thing like that. So typically we'll associate with distance. So let's say this is five and we're not gonna put any units. It's not like math class where you have to put like five kilometers. This is just five. So five is the, um, I should not circle it because I'll be confusing then. So five is the weight of this edge from one to three, from, from the nodes one, uh, that connect nodes one and three. And now let's go to our next uh, definition. And that next one is the path. So a path is a sequence of adjacent edges connecting two nodes. So a path, um, if you want uh, a path from three to two, would look like going from three to one in this edge, and then the, uh, from node one to node two through this edge. And so going through these uh, different <clears throat> nodes is going through a path or trying to get from one place to another, you're following a specific path. And now the shortest path is the sequence of edges connecting two nodes with the uh, least possible weight sum. So let's pretend we have some more uh, weights over here. So we have six and two, and this is, uh, let's call this one 10. Okay. So we have, if we want to have a path or shortest path from three to two, if we went from, uh, let's change the color here. If we went from three to one, to two, what would the sum of our weights be? 
Type it in the chat. 15, correct. So we have this five and this 10 here makes 15. So one way we have 15 and the other way, oh, why am I undoing that? Okay, um, so we have 15. And then if we go this way, we have uh, three to one uh, to node five to node two. What is the um, weight of, what is some of the weights in this path? 13, correct. So the shortest path would be to go from three to one to six to two. So when we're associating with weights, it's not necessarily um, how many nodes do I have to pass through, it's how do I go there while maintaining uh, the lowest sum of weights. And so that is um, what it means to follow a shortest path. Now let's go into a cycle. So a cycle is a loop in a graph such that you can travel back to a node you were just on without reusing an edge. So in this example, um, let's get rid of the sum of the red here. Um, let's use our eraser tool. Uh, I might be erasing a lot of extra stuff, but uh, actually, yeah, this is not working out pretty well. Let's just stick with black and just go over it. All right, if we um, pretend the red isn't there anymore, we'll change colors too. Um, if we wanted to find a cycle here, an example of a cycle would be going, would be uh, the nodes one to two, two to five, and five to one, because they're connected to each other. This is almost like an enclosed shape. So that is where uh, the cycle comes in. And now let's go back and um, to our remainder of the terms. And we're about, uh, we're past halfway there now. So a tree is a graph such that there are no cycles in the graph and only one path between any pair of nodes. So uh, quick question, is this a tree? What do you mean by sort of? Does it, uh, it has to satisfy both, it has to satisfy both requirements. Uh, there's no cycles in the graph and only one path between any, any pair of nodes. So yeah, there is this is not a tree because of the cycle in here. But if we were to draw a tree, um, we could do that right now. Um, it would look something like this. We have a vertex one and then two, three, and then we could have uh, four and five. And here we see that uh, there are no cycles in this graph because you can't return to a single spot from where you came from. So if you start at three, you can only go outward and you'll never, no matter what path of uh, nodes you take, no matter what set of, ed uh, no, no matter what set of edges you walk along, you'll never get back to node three. Um, and so this would be considered a tree because there are no cycles in this graph and there are at most one, there's at most one path connecting each pair of nodes. And uh, in most cases, uh, one will imply the, uh, saying a cycle will imply, saying that there's a cycle will imply that there's more than one path to a node um, unless it is completely uh, separate. And so that would be if it's over here, but actually it's still, it still be the case because if you want to get some from like notes, uh, that was a pretty bad drawing. If you want to get from six, seven, eight, if you want to get from six to eight, you could either go here or you can go here and here. And so actually one uh, in 99% of cases, one will imply the other. All right, um, so let's go back to our um, terms. And so now we can uh, talk about traversing. Traversing is a method of going through all the nodes in a graph in a certain order. Traversing a tree is to, uh, we'll be traveling through all nodes. So we're gonna be learning about two techniques of traversing today. And those are BFS and DFS. And we'll go into those in a bit. But um, <clears throat> in this lesson, uh, or so far in this lesson, we won't uh, study the traversing techniques just yet. You just have to know that there are certain ways that you can uh, travel along nodes. And um, that is known as traversing. So that will be something we focus on in like 20 minutes or so, maybe less. Um, a directed edge. Uh, a directed edge is 
connecting nodes A and B uh, that can only be traveled along uh, from A to B. So, and then uh, by contrast, an undirected edge uh, means that you can travel along A to B and from B to A. And so I like to associate this with um, a once a one-way road and a two-way road. So typically in a downtown area, you're gonna find more uh, one-way roads. Uh, okay, so this is just bugging out, but we'll just go with it. All right, so if we have now A and B, um, and we can only travel along from A to B, this, this is just like an arrow up there that's representing that the direction. Uh, that uh, that would be directed because you can only travel one way along the street. And then if we were undirected, we would be able to go from A to B, from A to B, and also from B to A. And so this is uh, what it would look like in a program. So this is a one-way street, and this is a two-way street. And so that's all the terms that you need to know for now. Um, but it's obviously going to be a bit confusing at first because you're just being thrown like, what, like 10, 15 terms at you? Or, or like maybe like, I don't even know what it is. Um, you're being thrown a bunch of terms at you. So at first it's going to seem confusing, but you're going to get the hang of it real fast. So now let's go on to modeling graphs. So there are multiple ways to model a graph depending on the situation. The most common method is using a 3D list. Let's take it, uh, the following de directed graph along with their node numbers and edge weightings. So uh, this is pretty uh, close to what I was, uh, it's, all of these uh, graphs are gonna look the same. They're always gonna have these circles and then they're gonna have these edges in between or lines. And then they're gonna have weightings on them if they're a weighted graph. And so, um, <clears throat> yeah, these, this is an example of a graph and we're gonna learn to model it using a 3D list. So um, let's look at um, a, a shortest path, for example. So there, the nodes are, uh, are from one to six, and then the lines are connected, uh, lines connected circles with the numbers on air weightings. Okay, so uh, let's observe this graph, not necessarily just um, a uh, shortest path observation. So first off, um, are there any cycles in this graph? Yep, sure there are. Uh, we can actually come up with uh, some examples. So for example, we have uh, nodes one, two, three, and six, and they form kind of an enclosed shape. And then also nodes two, five, and six are also in enclosed shape. So, um, those enclosed shapes uh, will imply that there are cycles in this graph. Um, and yeah, uh, actually, wait, should this be? Uh, actually, no, this should say undirected graph. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> well, don't worry, the, the lesson plan will be updated automatically because it's Google uh, form or Google Docs, but let's not worry about that. So. Um, this is an undirected graph because we're not specifying that, uh, let's say from node one to node four, we're not, we're not specifying that uh, it's going from one to four and that's the only way it's going through. So if we were to model this, uh, the input would look something like uh, this. So the first two numbers would be one, the number of nodes and two, the number of edges. So we can see that there's clearly six nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's seven edges, uh, one connecting one and four, one and three, two and three, two and five, five and six, two and six, and one and six. And so there are seven edges in this graph. And so it's the number of nodes and the number of edges. And then after, uh, what would happen is there are uh, three numbers. There are um, the next uh, the next few lines represent how um, an edge is going to work. So there are seven lines because there are obviously seven edges. So uh, each line is going to contain uh, the node, uh, the node that the edge starts from, and the and the uh, node that the uh, edge ends to. And so it could be one four or four one since it's an undirected graph. We're implying it can go either way. And then after it's the weight of the edge. 
which is 31. So I'll actually paste that information here so you don't have to type it out yourself. Um, so this is the um, <clears throat> this is the, how the graph would be modeled in an input. So now let's go on to how it would be um, implemented. So we have um, the first number is number of nodes, the second is number of edges, and then every set of three numbers a, B, and K afterwards represent edge from A to B with a weighting of K. So that's just a summary of what I said earlier of how this is going to work. And since this path is undirected, we can treat each undirected edge as two edges, one from A to B with weight K and one from B to A with weight K. So now let's um, go ahead and start this out with um, our Python program. So you can open your... Uh, your uh, IDE is probably going to be idle, but you can use whatever you want, really. I don't really care. Um, so um, what do we learn from our uh, previous lessons? We can use, uh, we can take it on input for multiple lines as um, n comma n equals, you have two choices. You can use map of int to input.split which is a more uh, kind of a show off way, but it's pretty convenient if you know you're just gonna have integers or you can do um, list our um, first data equals in int i for i and input that split. And then after you say n comma m is first data at zero and first data at one. And then now let's go back to our um, code. And so we are not a code, our input. So next, the next M lines, because we're saying N is the, um, N is the number of nodes and uh, M is the number of edges. So then we have to loop through for um, <clears throat> I in range M, because we're going to go through and get M edges in our input. And after we said that there are three numbers, A, B, and K, that represent that there's an edge from A to B with a weighting of K. So let's get that input down. So we can say um, edge equals int I, whoops, that's not what I meant to do, um, int I for I in input dot split. And then after we can say A, B, and K are edge at zero, edge at one, and edge at two. <clears throat> uh, did I spell? Oh, no, I just, yeah, I completely spelled first wrong in the beginning, so my autofill just automatically did it wrong. <laughs> yeah, coders can't spell, right? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's keep going with this. So uh, we said that uh, <clears throat> we wanted to hold this in some sort of 3D list. And so the idea of our 3D list is that um, 3D list will hold uh, primarily one, the index. All right, uh, we'll hold uh, data for each of the indices or indexes of the uh, nodes. And then within those, there will be a list of um, <coughs> the uh, node it's connected to and the weight of said node, or so weight of said edge. So let's see how this is implemented. So we can say that the graph is our, um, the graph is our uh, variable name for the actual graph itself. And then we need n nodes. So let's just go with, um, there's going to be a blank list. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to worry about extra formatting. So for i in range n, uh, graph.append. And then from here, we're just going to put in blank list. So that means that when we print graph, it's just going to be um, uh, an n blank list. And since n is 6 in our case, it's going to be 6 blank lists. So now we can go with um, our program. And so after we get our data for the edges, we want to, uh, to add the data for each edge or uh, data for each node that's involved in this 
um, <clears throat> uh, involved in this edge. So since this is undirected, we have to add the data from for edge A or no, for node A and node B. So for node A, we have to append that there's an edge that's connecting uh, A to B with the weighting of K. And so this is the um, adding the data for node A. Since this is an undirected graph, we need to add the data to B as well. And so it's going to look pretty similar. It's just going to be graph at B dot append and it's just A comma K. So um, let me go over this one more time. The reason why I'm appending it for A, B, K, and also B, A, K is because the, the graph is undirected, which means that if there's an edge, if you can walk along from A to B with the weighting of K, then that means you can walk along from B to A with the weighting of K. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let me know if you have any questions about that now because um, most of our modeling is gonna be based off of this fundamental knowledge. Okay, if not, um, we'll actually see what our graph looks like. So let's actually uh, import pprint because this is a um, multi-dimensional list and it'll look kind of weird, but it'll be fine. Um, pprint, or actually uh, you probably learned uh, from pprint import star. It doesn't matter, but this will probably be easier because you can just use the pprint command, not pprint dot pprint. So pprint uh, graph. And now let's copy our data um, and put it in. So what's it gonna look like here? Okay, something's wrong. Uh, list index out of range. Did I mess up somewhere? Um, Oh, I forgot to, I completely forgot to go over this. Um, let's have a look at our data again. Um, I'll probably have to modify the document because I don't think I accounted for this when I was writing the code. Um, if you recognize how uh, there's six nodes, that means there are six spots in the graph. And so that means that if I'm trying to access a uh, graph at index six, it's going to be out of balance because there's graph at zero, graph at one, graph at two, graph at three, graph at four, and graph at five because it's zero indexing. So actually, when we're modeling a graph, we should actually be uh, subtracting uh, one from A and one from B because we're going to go, because typically it's going to be inputted as one indexing in problems, um, and then we're converting to zero indexing. Converting from one indexing uh, to zero indexing. But um, whether it's one indexing or zero indexing, it will be specified in the contest if this type of problem appears. Um, and since we're teaching it, this type of problem will probably appear. Um, so yeah, so we have A minus equals one and B minus equals one. And now let's see what it's gonna look like. Mm, hopefully it works. Um, let's go back and copy it again. pprint is not defined. I did type pprint with two R's. Okay, so we can see that the graph looks pretty cool. Um, it has 331, 532, 289. Um, and so if we looked back to our, um, if we look back to our uh, nodes listing, if we see that node one is connected to uh, node four with a weight of 31, node six with a weight of 32, and node three with a weight of 89. And so since it's just one less than everything else, um, it's one less because it was just subtraction, then we can do, uh, it will be three, five, and two rather than four, six, and three. So that's uh, the idea of how we store our data. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go on to the next part of our lesson. Uh, let me know if you have any questions right now, please, because this is the fundamental stuff to that and that we're going to build off of this.
Okay. Um, if not, then we'll go on to our um, traversal system. So, like I said, uh, we were able to store the data now, but now we have to do stuff with it. We have to walk along it somehow. So this is where uh, traversing a graph is going to come in. And so it's uh, quite literally just uh, walking along through a graph starting at uh, one point. And so there's two ways to go through a graph using DFS depth first search or using BFS breadth first search. I remember I had a, uh, I, I have a friend who uh, actually thought we were saying breakfast search when we were learning it the first time in our computer science club. But yeah, that was a, we had a pretty good laugh at that time. Um, yes, breakfast search. It's that's 100% what it is. Um, totally. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very appealing. It's also very tasty. So now we need to talk about uh, two data structures, stacks and queues. So imagine you have a stack of paper and you um, can only do things, uh, if you have a stack of paper and, and you don't wanna lift the paper itself, you only have two operations. You can either add to the stack or remove from the stack. And so when you uh, actually add from this, add into the stack, um, you add to the top of it. Let me actually get some demonstration. Okay. Um, let me see if I can share my video. Uh, start video. All right. Um, can people see me? Yep. Yeah. All right. So. Let's say I have this stack of paper. I have two operations I can do with a stack. I can remove from the top of the stack or add to the top of the stack. And those are the only two things I'm going to do with the stack. And so that's the uh, general idea of how a stack works. So yeah, no burning the stack. Please don't burn the stack. And also, how are you going to burn? Well, you could just delete the stack in a program, but... <laughs> Yeah, but don't burn a stack. Um, now let's go back to our uh, screen. So that's the idea of a stack. You want to add it, you add to the top. And you want to remove it, you remove from the top. And so you can't do, um, you can't do much um, with it other than adding or removing the top. And so it has, its, it has some of its use cases, but not many. And so because of that, uh, it's known as a um, uh, last in, first out type of stack, or LIFO. And so you add it from the top, and you remove it from the top. So, um, <clears throat> so that means that if you had five people, person one, person two, person three, person four, person five, in there, and then you were to remove all of them, and since you're moving to the top, that means person five gets removed first, person four second, person third third, person two fourth, and person one fifth. So the person who is in the last is going to be out the first, and the person who is um, inside first is going to be in there for the longest. And so that's the idea of a stack. And then a queue is like people waiting in a line. <clears throat> Whoever gets there first uh, gets to leave first. You cannot add to the middle. You can add to the end. Uh, but you can add to the end, and you always take out from the front, and there's no cutting in line. And so this is called a first in, first out uh, data structure, a FIFO. And so, obviously, uh, if you're at the cafeteria, uh, sorry for those who are in their school who couldn't be in their uh, ca local cafeteria because of uh, the uh, current pandemic. But um, if you're in a cafeteria, if you're in some sort of line, you obviously come in from the back, and then you're going to leave from the front. And so that's the idea of a FIFO structure. And so um, now when we're uh, going through these DFS and BFS techniques, we're going to use either a stack or a queue, and we're going to talk about their implementation. And now we're going to use uh, this type of graph over here, this uh, image. And we're just going to copy it. Um, let's just take a picture of it, and let's go to our documents or let's just open a new word document all right um so now we need to go through our first technique which is going to be dfs or depth first search 
So it uses a stack to traverse the graph. It's going to, um, it's going to uh, go all the way down in one branch and then, all, and then make its way slowly up and then go into the other branch. And uh, so how, remember how it works is whatever you put in the uh, first will come out the last. Um, so let's see how this is going to work. So if we start with our node one and we just want to traverse through the entire graph, how it would work is uh, it would first add one. And so that's the first thing that gets inserted into the stack. And then after it will add in th uh, three and then four. So let's keep track of that. So we have two, three, and four. Actually, since you're inserting it in that order, it's actually going to be, uh, let's actually just put it on the right side. All right. So you insert two. Uh, what's going on here? Um, so you insert two, you insert three, and you insert four. And so they're all the net, there was all the ones that are connected to node one. And since uh, we're, let's just say we're inserting like this, and now we're going to take it out like this. So first we're going to knock off is four and see what we're going to add to that. And so from four, you're only going to have six. So you're going to add six there. And uh, that's because this four is just gone from the table. So uh, we put it on top and we're going to have six. And then six is going to connect to, um, it's going to connect to seven and it's going to connect to nine. So we're going to have seven and then we're going to have nine. And so um, it's just going to work like uh, it's just going to keep going through this cycle. Um, <clears throat> but now we're at some dilemma here. We're at nine and the only thing it's connected to is six, but we've already visited six. So we want to do, uh, we want to run our code in such a way such that we keep track of what node is visited. Keep track of visited nodes. And so since we want to keep track of it, and so let's say we have some visited uh, list that uh, makes it, that becomes true for a certain index once you visit that node. And so since we've done that, uh, Oh wait, this should have been crossed out. Um, since we've done that, we've already visited six. So there's nothing nine is connected to. So it just gets crossed out. And then same thing goes to seven. Since it's not connected to anything, it just gets crossed out. And then now we're back at three. Three is connected to one and six, but not, uh, we've already visited both of those. So it just gets crossed out and then it goes into the two and then so on and so forth. And then that's the idea of the DFS. So in an implementation, this would look like, let's just comment this out. Um, this is a DFS. And so what we need to do is have a visited array. Visited equals, or list. Visited equals false for i in range. Uh, and since there are nine nodes, uh, we're going to say nine. And then, uh, Actually, you know what? Um, we're just going to say 10 and one index. One, let's just zero index this. Uh, actually, uh, this is one indexing. Uh, one indexing. And so uh, visited at zero won't do anything. And then so far, the points we are visiting, uh, the points we're going to start with is one. Um, so let's see how we can do our DFS. So we're going to keep going until we have nothing left in the stack that we search through all the points and now we're going to uh, do nothing with it. So while len of points is not equal to zero and I can't type, um, then we want to uh, take it out from the um, back. Uh, we'll just say the back. And so there's a certain method that we can use and that's going to be the dot pop method. So we can say cur uh, node equals points dot pop. And let's see how this is going to work out. We can say print points. And so we can see our order of traversal. And then after we can, we mark the visited 
at this current node as true. And then after we'll have our graph, uh, we'll loop through all the things in our graph. So for next node in uh, graph at curve, we haven't initialized graph yet, so I'll do that in a moment, points.append curve. And so this is how uh, our graph would look like. Um, so let's actually um, graph equals, uh, and we're gonna just do it this pretty fast this time. So uh, blank for i in range 10, and now we'll uh, look at how this is modeled. So this graph has one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine edges. So nine edges. So for i in range nine, Then we can uh, work with our uh, input. And so since we're just gonna go, and so uh, we're assuming that this is a undirected graph. So we're just gonna do, and there's no weightings here. So we'll just do a, b equals map of ints to input dot split. Or you could do the alternate way as discussed up here. Um, so we can have our graph data inputted. And then after we can just say graph at a dot append b, and then graph at b dot append a. Now let's uh, input, or actually let's make a list of all of our data. And so we have a node from one to two, from one to three, from one to four, or an edge from one to two, one to three, one to four, and then from two to five, five to eight, um, three to six, uh, four to six, six to seven, and six to nine. So if we were to have all this data and then now we inputted this, let's see how it would go through. Oh, I didn't, points, not points. Uh, graphic curve. No, this should be um, graphic curve node. And then points out pen, and this should be next node. I messed up. Okay, and see how I completely messed up? And so the reason I completely messed up is because I didn't check if this, uh, if we've already visited a point, because now we're just going to go through in a cycle and just keep getting next new points, new points, new points. And um, now let's check, uh, let's just modify our code so that we can get a proper uh, order. So if not vis at, visited at um, current node, now we'll be able to see in what order are they going through. So let's copy our input and paste it. So it went from one, four, six, nine, seven, three, two, five, eight. And so um, as you can see, it's going through and uh, it's going to uh, a very end from one side. So it's going one, four, six, nine. And so it got to the very end of one part, then it slowly made its way up the uh, rankings and then it went from six to three. And then after it go, it went off to the other side and then did the same thing, went from two to five to eight. And so this idea of going down deep as far as you can go and then branching off to the sides is the DFS in our approach. And so that's the simple idea of DFS um, is points supposed to be uh, for the while statement. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be points. I'm sorry. Um, I'll, uh, this is the final code that we have that I have because I messed up quite a bit. Um, I guess I can paste this, but I feel like it's gonna be useless because some of the tabs are messed up. Uh, but there's the code if you want to look at it. And then I'm pretty sure if you copy paste it, it might not work because idle requires it to have specific indentation, but it might work. Um, what's wrong? Uh, what is the error that it gives you?
Oh, no worries. Okay, yeah, so that should be the final uh, thing for DFS because uh, we successfully were able to go through and go to the deepest part. No worries, no worries. Um, we're, we went through the deepest part of uh, one branch and then we branched off into the other ends. And so that's the idea of DFS. And so the thing with DFS is you have to go all the way down and then you go off to the sides. But the thing is, it's rarely used over BFS because BFS is faster because you're always branching out and you're always looking for new branches in your queue. That's what the um, optimal choice is. So when you're using uh, pathfinding and stuff like that, it's typically best to use uh, BFS. And so we're going to learn about BFS right now. Um, so BFS. BFS uses a queue to traverse a graph. Starting at one, uh, let's get a new copy of the image. Um, let's go back to our document and let's go down here. Or if that's how it was, then up here. Okay, so how BFS is gonna work is it's always gonna um, add things to the back of the queue and then it's gonna uh, move forward. So if we have one as the first thing in our queue, then it adds the uh, things it's connected to. It's going to add two, three, and four. And look, recognize how I'm adding um, away from one to the right. And now one is eliminated. And now one is eliminated. Now we add. Now we go to two and see what it's connected to. Remember, we're not going to add anything that we're already visited. Uh, we've already visited. So the only thing we add is five. And then now this gets eliminated. And now three. So uh, we've used this path and now we're here uh, and we have this. And so three, uh, it's connected to one, but the thing is it's already visited. So we just add six. So we have six and then now we cross off three. And then four, um, four has already been, um, four is, uh, four is in, the, in the front. But the thing is, everything it's connected to has been added to the queue already. Uh, but the thing is, since six hasn't been visited yet, or that that means that it's still technically added to the queue. But one has been added to the queue. Uh, one has already been visited, so uh, we add another six, and then this gets removed. And then now we look at five, and two has already been uh, uh, inspected, so that's not added. And so the only thing that's added is this eight. Uh, whoops. So you add eight and then we uh, cross off five and then six um, is connected to seven and nine. So um, let's just add this one first and then this one. So nine and seven, and then this gets removed. And then since we've already visited six, this gets removed. And then from eight, there's nothing connected to it. So there's nothing we can do. From nine, there's nothing connected, nothing else that's connected that we haven't visited, so there's nothing. And then from seven, there's nothing. So notice how it went into the different layers. So it went, uh, so this went through, um, let's make this a bit thicker. It went one, uh, one away, it went one layer away from one. And then after this went to the second layer, away from one, and then after a third layer, away from one. Whereas DFS went immediately down to, um, DFS went all the way away from one, all four layers away from one, then slowly reduced the number of layers it could go through, and then it made its way over here. And so this is the idea of BFS versus DFS. So BFS likes to, um, go through the breadth, go through the same depth of all the layers, whereas depth first search immediately tries to go through all the, uh, uh, go through the entire depth. So let's see how this is going to look like in our code. I'm sorry we're going slightly over time. Uh, this is the last thing in our code. So we're just going to um, wrap this up really quickly. Um, so our DFS is going to look like, and I can't, okay. So our DFS, or not DFS, BFS, um, BFS 
is going to look like. Um, So the thing is, we have to import a queue. So we have to do it from queue import uh, star. So because it's not a uh, dedicated library in Python that uh, we have immediately. So now we have to do that. So first off, we have our uh, visit array, uh, which is the same as the one we had before. And then after, uh, we have points. And so points this time, instead of being a list, it's going to be a queue. And this is how it works. You have to define it as Q, uh, yes, it right, as Q, Q, U, E, U, E. And this has to be a capital Q. And now our first point is going to be uh, one. And so this is our um, Q that we start with. And then after, it's pretty uh, simple. So we do while not points.empty. Um, so the condition here is we'll keep going until our queue is uh, actually empty. So we do uh, current node equals points.get. Now we can print the current node. And then after, um, actually, no, we have to make sure that we've already visited. If not visited at current node, then we can print the current node. Uh, that went away. So we can print the current node, and then after we flag it as true, visited at current node equals true. And then now we just say uh, for, for next node in uh, graph at um, current node. And our graph is still, oh, we're going to have to read, we're going to have to take in the graph again. Um, Let's just, we're going to take in our graph again. So we're going to use the same process uh, for next node and graph at current node. So this is going to go through all the uh, nodes that are connected to the current node. If not visited at next node, then we add it to our queue. And so the way we add to queue is doing uh, points dot put. And then the um, thing we want to put in is the next node. And so this is how we put something into the queue. Um, now let's see if this is going to work. So let's uh, actually have this uh, running. And then let's copy our um, data that we had. And so we had these edges. And so it went through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 7, 9. So it was slightly different from our order, depending on how we inputted it. But we can see how it went through all the breadth. It went through the same uh, amount of layers in each thing as we described over here. We said over here that it would go through uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 8, 9, 7. But 7, 9, if we just modified our input a little bit, we would have gotten uh, 9, 7. But the thing is, those were interchangeable because 9 and 7 were both 4 away from 1. So this is the idea of BFS. Now I'll paste this code over here. And uh, if you don't have the code um, completely done or there's something wrong with it, don't worry. Uh, and like the zoom meeting closes, don't worry because um, your uh, lesson, this lesson plan will be uh, up just after this uh, is over. So I'm gonna paste this here. Um, and yeah, so uh, you can also have your sample data um, if you want to try it out, um, edges in BFS slash DFS testing are these. So you can use those for uh, BFS and DFS. And um, you can do cool things with it. Like you can think of uh, how to do a shortest path algorithm, for example, if you want to do some research on that before the contest. You can do a lot of things with grass. There's, it's really complicated sometimes, but uh, this is just a brief introduction and uh, of something that can be that you can literally study for like the rest of your life if you want to. A, a bunch of things of graph theory. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, basics of graph theory that we went through today. So now um, the lesson's over, but I'm going to go through how to make a Dom Judge and a Dmosh account because those are important for you to practice or write the contest. So first, we're going to go through our DOM judge. All right. And so the link 
to John Dom Judge is party.vmcs.club. And so let me log out. Um, actually, no. So this is going to be the first thing you see when you log in. So let's just give you this link. Um, is for the contest. It's called Dom Judge. So if you go to log in, uh, if you've already made an account uh, before, that's good. But if you haven't, it's just a simple register now. Then um, you just enter your email. So uh, no, your username, you can put anything you want. Just make sure it's appropriate. Otherwise, you will be deleted from the system. So um, we'll just say sat Aurora. And then email address is uh, sat at whatever your email address. Team name, um, just keep this the same as your um, username and no affiliation with the team. So do not add yourself to, do not add yourself to anything. And then after set your password and don't forget it because otherwise you're gonna have to verify yourself with an email. So a few notes for you are for you to, uh, once again, choose your username that's appropriate. Choose an email, ad make sure your email address is yours uh, because it'll be used to recover your password. Uh, your team name has to be the same as your uh, username. And then password, something, uh, that whatever you want. Make sure it's appropriate once again, and don't forget it, ultimately. Um, and yeah, so now we can go on to the Dimash. And so this is more of if you want to practice for, um, if you want to practice for um, the contest or you want to just do compare programming practice. This has a huge database of questions, and it's run by Canadians, so you can stay home to uh, stay uh, true to your country. So uh, we just sign up and then you just, let me just get rid of that. Um, it's pretty simple. Just uh, go to dmarsh.ca, sign up, put your username, email, password, password again, and keep the time zones Toronto if you're in the EDT um, time zone. So if you're in Ontario, you're EDT. If you're in Michigan, you're also EDT. Um, but your time zone could vary depending on where you guys are from. Default language. Um, we are using Python 3 right now. So if you're new, I'd say stick to Python 3. And affiliated organizations, if your school uh, has, um, if your school has used, um, has a uh, thing on uh, Dimash, then you can do that, but it's not necessary at all. So, but for example, my school, Vincent Massey Secondary School does have one. And then after you just do your capture and register. Um, so are there any questions for this, uh, all the stuff that uh, I threw you guys? Because I, I know I threw a lot of you guys. Uh, oh, shoot. Um, so, yeah, I know I threw a lot of you guys, but um, <clears throat> it's really important that you understand graph theory because, uh, and you at least try the problems because they're really important to um, go on and uh, try. Uh, it's really important to go on and, and try the Dmosh problems that, uh, so that you can just you know, uh, practice them for the contest because it's for most of you. Um, yeah. The team name has to be the same as your username. It has to be the same. Otherwise there's going to be a bunch of stuff messed up in the system and then we won't figure it out. So once you're into the Dimash, you can try these problems and, uh, you'll be able to, uh, uh, you can just try the problems by once you make an account, you just go to, uh, problems and then you just type in some of the words in the problem. You could type in, uh, for example, if you're trying to do running circles, you could type in running in, running in and you'll probably get it. You can type in Dwight's own, uh, you can type in Dwight, you'll get it uh, probably eventually. But yeah, the system is pretty easy to use. So I recommend doing those problems on uh, the Dimash and make sure to be there tomorrow for the, um, <clears throat> for tomorrow's contest on the Dom Church, tomorrow, Sunday at 2 p.m. EDT. Um once again, Sunday, 2 p.m. EDT, that's when our contest start, starts. It'll run until, I believe, Friday at 6, p 6 p.m. Um, EDT. And yes, I know she can she even get there is based on a true story. Uh, it's pretty funny. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for it uh, for today. Uh, if you want to, you can be on the, uh, you can be on the uh, emoji contest that's going to be uh, happening in a few minutes. I'm not sure exactly when, but just stay tuned in the server. And yeah, that's all for today. Um, hopefully you guys had uh, fun gaining knowledge in your graph theory and um, I'll see you guys in the server.
All right. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate the messages. Um, 